As a corrections officer, we are not solely here to enforce rules. You know, we have to communicate what we want and strive to build these gentlemen to be released to our community. It's eye-opening that, you know, most of these guys do want to change. And a lot of these gentlemen, they strive to be, you know, to hear that, that voice of reason coming in and say, hey, you're, you're doing the wrong thing. I knew that if I could help one person that was incarcerated, it helps hundreds of victims. Statistics are saying that a lot of families know somebody or have somebody incarcerated in the United States. I always looked at everybody as somebody's child. When I come in with that mindset, when I first started, these are somebody's children in here. You know, regardless of what these guys do or what they're here for, it's up to us as corrections officers to realize that they're just, they're human, just like us, and they deserve to be treated with respect. Treat them like, you know, with respect, but yet be firm. We are changing lives. We're changing behavior patterns of our residents. We're developing them into different people than what they entered. We want these people to succeed once they, they release and become your neighbors. And I think once they go out, trying to do the right thing, it's already tough enough. Having that stigma that follows you sometimes, it's even tougher for these folks. And I think having that empathy and understanding and giving people a second chance, I think it's important. The goal is for them to be law-abiding citizens upon release. Some of them are going to be released, some of them are not, and we have to understand that. But we still want them to have the skills. Uh, they can be our neighbors one day, so we want to make sure that they have everything in their toolbox to be productive upon their release. One of the former residents is my neighbor. So we have plans in place when they come in to start from day one working on cognitive change and behavior changes, trying to get the residents to think differently and to act differently. Make sure that they're getting the substance abuse treatment that they need. Make sure they're getting their GED if they don't have it. Um, maybe they don't really have a lot of work skills, so we're trying to push them and get them into vocational education like our welding program or something to give them job skills. So we have a set time frame and we have a set goal that when we release this resident, we're trying to make sure that they're not coming back. And that's what we hope for. That's what we keep pushing is we don't want you back. We want you out with your families. We want you out. A lot of the gentlemen that are here didn't have the upbringing of uh, a father teaching them how to turn wrenches on Saturday. We do a lot of, of manual physical work and some days it's not glamorous. Um, overall, most of the time they're very happy to pick up another skill set, pick up a trade, uh, something they can use later in life when they get out. Honestly, they're probably the brains behind a lot of this. I mean, they're some pretty talented people, and I might have the idea of how I want to do it, but they're going to critique it to make it look pretty nice. They have so much pride in their work. They look forward to, to coming to work. They stay out of trouble. I think having a job they enjoy, just like in the real world, if you enjoy it, you're going to stay out of trouble. They can look back, and next year they'll still see the building. They'll still see the sidewalk. They'll see what they were building. They're talented. It just kind of stinks that they don't have their talents outside in the real world. We did a lot of work in the communities, the VFWs, the, the American Legion, the, we've got a child care facility that we built programs for, we built roofs for. So they can, they can go out and they can see that. And a lot more with the minimum guys, they can say in five years when they're out driving around their family, hey, you see that building? I actually built that. I, I learned how to do this and this with that. Uh, that part is something that they take with them after uh, being in prison. But as far as an employee, it's very rewarding to see how well the in, even inmates taking care of inmates, the camaraderie between staff and inmates. You get to see the guys, they're happy to come and say, hey, I graduated with my GED today, or some of them get their college degrees, or they're just excited to share with you, you know, their, their son got a championship in a basketball tournament. There is a resident here. I watched him grow, and he's taught himself to play guitar. He is actually a teaching others to play guitar now. They put on concerts here in the Spiritual Life Center. He's graduated college with his associate's degree. He's a mentor to other residents also. So it's, it's great to see him go from where he was to where he is, and there's always that fulfillment in seeing someone grow and progress as they go and watching their journey. It's not something that I think most people maybe would think of as a success. It's not like, hey, here's the certificate, you win, right? But 
Mine is with, with the resident that when I first started working with him, um, he absolutely wouldn't communicate with officers at all, the authority figure thing, he wasn't having any part of it. And by the end of that time, just by slowly using the tools that, that we teach and, and working with him and having respectful conversations, I was actually able to, to know this resident by the end and he could come and ask me for advice, he trusted me. And even though he gave up on me numerous times, I never gave up on him. I always had this philosophy of uh, treat people like you like to be treated and uh, do your best. It takes a good mindset, uh, a mature mindset to be around, be around them because some of them can be difficult. I always ask them how their day's going when they come in and when they leave. So when you keep asking them how they're doing, that makes them stop, think about it. And if they want to talk, I'm right there for it. You need to give everyone respect. You can't walk in here expecting respect. You have to give it and then you'll receive it in the meantime. I mean, if you give the inmates respect, they'll respect you. We need a village worth of corrections officers in here because everyone brings something different. I'm always smiling, and that's one thing that they've said. That smile has made people want to keep going. At the end of the day, you're making a difference. I believe I make a difference. We care, and we take great pride in our facility. If you want to make a change in somebody's life, this is the place to start.